we welcome you to Staten Island University Hospital Community Park as the Gastonia Honey Hunters come to town to take on your Staten Island Ferry Hawks. I'm Nicholas Foster. And I'm Joe Mignano. And we're excited to be on the call with you tonight. So, Joe, not much went the Ferry Hawks way last night as they fell to the Long Island Ducks 14 to 1. Now they flip the now they turn the page as the Honey Hunters come to town for a three game series. What's your key to tonight's game? My key tonight's game, Nick, is the pitching staff. Ryan Hartman has struggled this first half of the season, has a 9.58 ERA, and the Ferry Hawks have allowed the most runs in the Atlantic League. The pitching staff needs to step up tonight if they want to get it done in the first game in this series against Gastonia. Last night, you know, as you mentioned, the pitching's really been a struggle for them all season. And last night, Michael Burns struggled, allowing eight earned runs in just two innings. They need Hartman to go deep into this game if they want to have a chance. Cole Freeman's going to lead things off for the Honey Hunters. First pitch from Hartman. And we are underway here. So that first pitch is going to be in there for a strike. Second pitch is skied behind home plate. That'll go foul. 0 and 2 quickly. Nice start from Hartman here. 0 2 gives you some leverage here on the third pitch. The 0 2. Inside ball one. Hartman the one-two. Grounded over to short. The throw on to first, and there's one away. So a nice job from Hartman to work quickly and get the first man out. Now coming up to hit for the Honey Hunters will be Kevin Santa. First pitch is in there for a strike. Six games this season, Santa's batting five for 20 with one RBI, three walks. And he's two for two in st stolen base attempts. Hartman working quickly, it's 0-2 to Santa. The one to kick the pitch. Grounded right back to Hartman. He'll make the throw on to first, and now there's two away. Nice start to the inning for Hartman. Quick two outs to get him warmed up here at home to this home Staten Island crowd on a Friday night. So with two away and none on, Zach Garrett on to hit. Hartman's first pitch is just a bit outside, so it'll be 1-0 and to, to Jarrett. Jarrett watches that second pitch right down the middle, so it'll be 1-1. One and one. That pitch tipped back, so now 1-2. and two. One two from Hartman. The inside and low, so now two and two. As in all three plate appearances for Gastonia, they've gone down to two strikes. As Hartman, as I said earlier, has some leverage on his two strike pitch. And Jared's gonna watch that one right down the middle, so it's a strikeout looking to end the top of the first for Hartman.
We welcome you back for the home half of the first inning. On the mound tonight for the Honey Hunters will be Zach Moore. He's 5-0 and this season with a 3.32 ERA. Leading off for the Fairhawks will be the center fielder, Brandon Pugh. He struggled last night, but has he gotten a pretty great start to the season so far? Has been a spark for this Ferry Hawks team. Pew cuts and misses at that first pitch. I would agree with that statement. He's definitely been a spark for this Ferry Hawks team. Second pitch of the at bat. Cut on and missed yet again. So quickly, 0-2 to Pew. Pew batting 300 flat on the season. Definitely the ideal leadoff guy he's been able to get on base. Can use his speed when he needs to. Stole base last night. The 0-2 is tipped back, so we'll do it again. Pew very aggressive to start off this at bat. Three pitches in a row, he swung on all of them. Ferry Hawks need to try and work the count of this successful Zach Mort so far this season. The 0-2. Cut on and missed. So Pugh goes down swinging to strike out to open up the home half of the first for Mort. Now coming up to hit for the Fairhawks will be the first baseman, Matt Winokur. Winokur went 0 for 4 last night, still looking for his first hit as a member of the Fairhawks. We'll see if he can do that here as there's one away and none on in the bottom of the first. Winokur skies that first pitch out into center field. Doesn't have to move much, and the catch is made. So quickly, two away with the shortstop, Angel Aguilar, coming up to hit. Quick two outs for Mort there, but I just want to add how it's going to be very hard to track these fly balls in the air. A foggy night here in New York City, but the center, field, center fielder there for Gastonia, he got it there nice and easily, but... It's going to be very difficult to track fly balls. Certainly would agree with that statement. Definitely a foggy night. Had some rain earlier in the day. Aguilar swings and misses at the first pitch. That fog kind of shading the city skyline right in front of us. Hoping the city skyline will come out a little bit later tonight. Certainly the best view in baseball. Can't say that enough. The old one to Aguilar is smacked into left field, but that ball is going to go foul. It's fair to say Mort is working quickly here. Struck out Pew to start the inning, then Winokur flew out into center, and now he's got 0-2 to Aguilar. The 0-2. Cut on and miss, so it's two strikeouts for Mord in the home half of the first as we head to the top of the second. It's a 0-0 game.
We welcome back. Well, we, we welcome you back to a nothing nothing game here in the top of the second. It'll be the third baseman Carlos Franco leading things off for the Honey Hunters. First pitch to Franco. It's low and outside. Ball one. Hartman was sharp in his first inning of work. Set the Honey Hunters down one, two, three, including a strikeout looking to end the inning. However, he's falling behind 2-0. Franco cuts and misses at the first strike, so it'll be two and one. Watch is low and outside, so now three and one. First hitters count of the game for the Honey Hunters. Three one pitches. Gonna catch the zone, so he'll be all knotted up three and two. Franco very successful against the righties, batting 310 this season. 3 2 pitch. Grounded over to second. That's gonna get by, and the Honey Hunters have their first hit of the ball game. So it's a leadoff single as Scott Manea comes up to hit. Manea watches that first pitch for a strike. Second pitch, the at bat is low and outside. Be one and one. And I this season slashing 282, 404, and 470 with an 874 OPS. He's got six home runs and four, 24 RBIs this season. Good spot for him. He's got a runner on first and none out. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Catches the inside part of the zone, so it'll be 1-2. and two. Hartman has not been having any trouble at all finding the zone early. Now another two-strike pitch. Pitches. Skied out into right, that's gonna fall. So it's back-to-back -back hits now for the Honey Hunters. So now with two on and none out, it'll be the first baseman, Curtis Terry, walking up to Milkshake. <laughs> Daniel Vogelback vibes. As Terry has struggled on the season with runners in scoring position, favorable matchup here for Hartman. That pitch is grounded over to the third, the throw to second, the throw to first, it's a double play. Five, four, three, the runner advances to third. However, a much more manageable situation with two away. Yeah, that's a great play by the shortstop there, Aguilar, to turn that double play. As, as you said, a way more manageable situation for Hartman. Two outs with a runner on third, so they don't have to worry about a sacrifice fly situation. With two out and a runner on third, it'll be Luis Curbelo on to hit for the Honey Hunters. Swings and misses at the first pitch, 0-1. Watches the second pitch low and outside, so it'll be one and one. As I said earlier, to open up the game, it would be crucial for the pitching staff to have a good game, but with the pitching staff, the fielding has to be on par, as so far that double play shows that. Curbelo putting together a nice A-B, it's two and one. That pitch is fouled back behind the plate. So now two and two.
Hartman trying to put the Honey Hunters away. 2-2. Two -two. Inside. So it'll be 3-2. Second full count of the inning. Big pitch here. Runner on third, two out, the pitch. Swung on and missed, strike three called. Hartman finds his way out of the jam, heading to the home half of the second. It'll be the hometown kid, Kevin Kraus, getting things started for the Ferry Hawks in the home half of the second. Mort was solid for the Honey Hunters in his first inning, striking out two swinging, went one, two, three. Kraus watches the first pitch go by 0 and 1. Big signing matchup here. Kraus 297 on the season against a successful Zach Mort. Certainly a matchup to watch. The 0-1. Skied out into center field. Catch will be made, so there's one away. Nice way to start the inning for Zach Mort. A quick two pitch out to open up the second inning. Well, Donnie Baldwin will come up to hit now. One out and none on. First pitch from Mort. In there, strike one. Mort, as we mentioned before, 5-0 and on the season, looking to make it 6-0. and 0-1, pitch is cut on and missed. 0-2 to Baldwin. Baldwin batting 245 on the season. He's got four home runs and 17 RBIs. 0-2 pitch. Skied out into right field. Play will be made. So quickly, two out, and Mort's retired his fifth straight batter. Fairhawks in danger going down one, two, three for the second straight inning. Yeah, the Fairhawks have been very aggressive to start off in the box. Sometimes that's the right approach against a pitcher who's been solid the entire year. Now up to hit will be the third baseman, Jack Elliott. Elliott was the lone bright spot for the Ferry Hawks last night, went three for four, drove in their only run. 
First pitch of the at-bat is inside. Elliot fouls that pitch back. One to one. Third pitch, the at bat is in there. Strike two. So one and two to Elliot. Wart's pitch is upstairs, two and two. Nice eye from Elliot. Wart to kick the pitch. Swung on and missed. Six straight batters retired for Mort. Oh, oh, going to the top of the third. Steven Sensley will get things started for the Honey Hunters here in the top of the third. It will be Ryan Hartman on for his third inning of work. First pitch is upstairs, ball one. Two zero now. Hartman ran into some trouble last inning, allowed two singles to start the inning, but then a 5-4-3 double play helped him to his second straight scoreless inning. He's falling behind 3-0 here, the pitch. In there, strike one. 3-0 is always a tough decision for the hitter as Hartman went right down the middle there, but... The hitter there looked at it. Now it's 3-2. I always say that 3-0, it depends on the situation, right? Early in the game, 3-0 count, you typically don't swing. But maybe if it's later in the game, you need a big hit, you take that chance. Sensley's going to go down swinging. So after falling behind 3-0, Hartman battles back, throws three straight strikes, and gets the strikeout one away. The designated hitter, Pedro Gonzalez, up to hit now. Watches the first pitch outside, 1-0. and oh. Hartman. 
Hartman's second pitch is low. Now behind 2-0, oh, the pitch. Gonzalez swings and misses at that one. 2-1. and one. That pitch rips into the gap. That ball is going to go. It's a home run for Pedro Gonzalez. And the Honey Hunters strike first. one nothing here in the top of the third. As Gonzalez sent that one out of the park. That's a great at-bat for him. Worked the count of Hartman. And then opens up the scoring here tonight. Certainly a shocker because Hartman's really been rolling on the mound so far. And Gonzalez, with a nice swing, that ball got out of here in a hurry. So will be the leadoff man now, Cole Freeman, with one away and none on. Now that pitch is hit hard, and it's back-to-back -back hits for the Honey Hunters. Yeah, last inning, Hartman had some issues as those issues seem to continue on into this inning. Last inning, they got out of that jam, but let's see if they can get out of this one. And the key for Hartman right now, he's got to find that consistency again. Can't get too nervous on the mound. Got to keep his composure. Runner's going to go. The throw to second. It'll be out as he fell off the bag. He was safe on the slide, but then... Couldn't hold on to the bag. So now two away. Yeah, he overran the bag there. Slid off as the Fairy Hawks catch a break. Freeman with nice speed, but as you mentioned, just couldn't hang on to the bag. It's 2-0 and oh to Santa. Santo grounds that one over to second. The throw to first, and the side is retired. one nothing, Honey Hunters heading to the bottom of the third. We welcome you back for the home half of the third. Fairhawks still looking for their first hit as Stevenson Romero will get things started. Mort's been sharp, struck out three. The DH will look to turn the tide of this one as the Honey Hunters hold a one nothing lead. Romero has to watch out. That first pitch high and inside, ball one.
with a pitch. One's also high, just not as inside, so 2-0. and oh. Mort battles back, has his first strike of the AB. Romero struggled to start his time here at the Ferry Hawks, recently joined the ball club. Pitches in there for a strike inside, so now two and two to Romero. Waiting on deck is the right fielder, Luis Castro. Two-two pitch. It's gonna be in there. Strike three called, Romero set down looking. That'll be the fourth strike out of the game for Mort as Luis Castro comes to the plate. Four strikeouts for Mort early. It's safe to say he's been settling in to this game. He's working with a nice rhythm on the mound. It's gonna be tough to break. First pitch. Right down the middle, strike one. Joe, you mentioned some aggressive hitting from the Ferry Hawks early in this game, but it seems a little more passive in this bottom of the third. Oh, one pitch. Grounded down the third baseline, but that'll go foul. Yeah, the Ferry Hawks have been passive to come out, and Mort has taken advantage of that as a cork out there against Romero as now the center fielder faces an 0-2 count. 0-2 pitches upstairs, one and two. Fairhawk still looking for their first hit of the night. The one-two pitch. Outside, so Castro battling his way back here. Castro swings and misses at the third strike. Five strikeouts now for Mort. We're only in the third inning of work. Garrett Cuber coming on to hit now. Huber watches the first pitch outside, pull one. Second pitch, the at-bat is in there for a strike. If you're just tuning in, it's one nothing Honey Hunters here in the bottom of the third with two out and none on. Fairhawks still looking, still looking for their first hit of the contest. Huber drives that one into right field, but the play will be made. So one, two, three, go the Fairy Hawks for the third straight inning. Nine straight batters retired for Mort. It's one nothing. Honey Hunters heading to the top of the fourth.
we welcome you back for the top of the fourth. It's the Honey Hunters with a one nothing lead. It'll be Ryan Hartman on the mound for his fourth inning of work. Hartman's been solid overall, but a home run to Pedro Gonzalez gave the Honey Hunters the one nothing lead in the top of the third. First pitch is outside ball one. Jarrett skies that one. It'll be the second baseman on to make the play. So one away. Nice quick out there, there for Hardman to get himself back into this game. He struggled in the third, but he has to remain calm, cool, and collected on the mound. And in general, he's been strong in the first half of this ball game. Absolutely. It'll be the third baseman, Carlos Franco, walking up to Baby Shark. First pitch is in there, strike one. Franco singled his first time up. Swings and misses at a pitch that got Kraus on the face mask. He'll be all right. One one. Franco has been hot yesterday. Five hits against Lancaster. He went three for three in game one and two for three in game two on a double header. He grounds that one up the middle. It'll be the shortstop on to make the play. The throw to first is in time. So two quick outs for Hartman as Manaya comes up to hit. Manaya also singled his first time up. Swings and misses at the first pitch. Second pitch, the at-bat is skied in, in foul territory. And the catch is going to be made by the first baseman, Matt Winokur. A great play as he had to reach over the dugout to make that one. one nothing. Honey Hunters headed to the bottom of the fourth.
It'll be Brandon Pugh leading things off at the Ferry Hawks here in the home half of the fourth. Zach Mort rolling on the mound right now. He's retired his first nine batters. Q batting over 300 going into this one. Watches the first pitch for strike one. Some fans in Hawk City Cheering on Brandon Pugh in the stands. One on one count. Got some let's go Pugh chance. Pugh fouls the 0-2 back, so we'll do it again. Barry Hawks looking to get something to go here. Mort has been very successful, retired nine, the, the first nine batters. It's the first baseman, Matt, Matt Winokur, waiting on deck. The 0 2 pitch from Mort. Just a bit outside, so it'll be one and two. Pitch to Pew, swung on and missed. It's the sixth strikeout of the night for Mort. 10 straight retired. Now on to hit is the first baseman, Matt Winokur. Still looking for that elusive first hit as a ferry hook. Now would be a good spot for it. First pitch is in there for strike one. Matt Winokur, drafted in 2017 by the New York Mets, was a member of the, uh, of the Syracuse Mets. Oh, one pitch. Check swing, but he went around. It'll be 0 and 2. Some real nice pacing from Mort. Go two. Upstairs, ball one. Mort to kick the pitch. Fouled back. Winokur not going down easy, putting together a nice at bat. Waiting on deck is the shortstop, Angel Aguilar. It's really turning into a beautiful night here at Staten Island University Hospital Community Bo Park. City skyline starting to emerge from the fog. The one two pitch. It's going to be low, two and two. Winokur making up a nice at bat here, working to count for Mort, trying to slow down that momentum he's had early on. Like what you said there, trying to slow down his momentum. 2-2 two -two pitch. Cut on and missed. The seventh strikeout of the game now for Mort. As Angel Aguilar comes on to hit. Aguilar struck out his first time up. One of the hotter hitters on this Ferry Hawk team. He'll look to give him a spark as they still look for their first hit of the ball game.
Aguilar tips the first pitch back. It'll be 0-1. Aguilar grounds that one over to third. The throw to first is in time. And the side is retired. one nothing. Honey Hunters headed to the top of the fifth. Curtis Terry will get things started for the Honey Hunters in the top of the fifth. Ryan Hartman's been solid, only giving up one run in his first four innings of work. First pitch is sky behind home plate, 0-1. As Terry has struggled against the Ferry Hawks this season, 1-4-11. Let's see if he could settle in against the Ferry Hawk crowd. Second pitch to the at bat is outside, so it'll be one and one. Terry skies that one into shallow left field. It'll be a shortstop coming on to make the play, and there's one away. Luis Curbelo up to hit. Struck out his last time up. Watches the first pitch for ball one. Little breeze blowing up here in the booth. That pitch rocketed into left field, but a nice catch out there in left field by Rodani Baldwin, and there's two away. Yeah, I said earlier, I think in the second inning, Hartman has been pitching well, but the fielding has to be on par with his performance, and that play there shows that. I think another thing we mentioned before, the fog maybe pl playing a little bit of a role today. Baldwin lost a little bit of his footing, but he still came down with a nice catch out there in left field. First pitch to Sensley's outside, ball one. Hartman's been real solid on the mound, as you mentioned, McNano. The bats can get going. We could have a nice competitive game here from the hometown crowd on a Friday. 2-0 and now, the pitch. Cut on and missed. 2-1. and one. 
Sensley also a victim of the strikeout his last time up. Watches that one for a strike. So it was a 2-0 count, is now quickly 2-2. Two two. We've seen Hartman battle back from these hitters' counts. Looking for a way out of the inning. Pitch is popped up. It'll be Aguilar making the catch. One, two, three, go the Honey Hunters. They lead one nothing after, as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Rodani Baldwin leading things off. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin Kraus, the hometown kid, leading things off for the Ferry Hawks. Here in the bottom of the fifth, they trail the Gastonia Honey Hunters one to nothing as they look for their first hit. Zach Mort's been real, real solid on the mound tonight. Kraus will look to turn things around with his 925 OPS and 298 batting average. First pitch to Krause is high and inside, ball one. More battles back. Be one on one. Kraus with the good eye there. It's two and one now. No matter the situation, the hometown crowd always gets excited for the hometown kid. Two and one pitches in there for strike two. Kraus with a good opportunity to try and get on base in a 2-2 count. None on none out here in the home half of the fifth. The pitch. Chopped over to second. Nice jumping catch there. Krause is retired. Now it'll be the left fielder, Rodani Baldwin. Flew out to right field his first time up. First pitch is inside, catches the inside part of the zone. It'll be 0 and 1 to Baldwin.
Baldwin. Chops that one down the third baseline. So now one and one. As a key for Hartman's success in this game has been going to a two strike count early on, as we see here. One one pitch for Mort. Upstairs two and one. All the way with a big swing and a miss there. And he's, um, my apologies, he's set down swinging. So it'll be a, yet another strikeout for Zach Mord as Jack Elliott comes on to hit. Elliott struck out his last time up. It's eight strikeouts now through four and two thirds inning. For Mort, first pitch to Elliott. Ground down the first baseline, but foul. Elliott, as mentioned before, the lone bright spot for the Ferry Hawks last night. Swings and misses at the 0-1, so now 0-2. Another 0-2 count for Mort. Mort's looking to retire his 15th straight batter. He's got eight strikeouts now. The 0-2. Swung on and skied out into center field. It'll be the shortstop making the catch. It's 15 straight retired for Zach Mort. Ferry Hawks trail 1-0 after five. Pedro Gonzalez is going to get us started here for the top of the sixth. It was one, two, three inning for Hartman. He's been sharp, only giving up one run in his first five innings of work. Of course, it was Pedro Gonzalez with that screamer back in the third. So Hartman might want to watch out here. He's falling behind 2-0 early on. And Gonzalez skies that one out into left field. And it's going to be down at the wall. Takes the turn at first, heads for two, and he's in there safely with his second hit of the ball game. 
So Gonzalez, that one looked like it might have got out of there. Almost had his second home run in the day instead of it's his second extra base hit of the day and a leadoff double. Yeah, Gonzalez has been seeing the ball well as of late. Including on Wednesday against Lancaster, went two for four with a home run and five RBIs as he opens up the sixth with a double. Freeman's going to try to lay down a bunt, but it'll go foul. Nice opportunity for the Honey Hunters to get some runs here with a man in scoring position and none out. However, we've seen Hartman really work his way out of some jams today, so if we, we'll see if he can work his way out of this one. Still no action in either bullpen. It's been a real classic pitcher's duel. Oh, one pitch. Foul back, so now 0-2. Third pitch of the at-bat is inside, one and two. Hartman trying to keep his composure with a runner on second and none out. Trying to keep the Honey Hunters to just one run, the pitch. Half swing, but he went around, so it's a strikeout for Hartman, and there's one away. Nice way to answer back from Hartman from that double, answers back with a strikeout. Santa coming on to hit now. The shortstop still looking for his first hit today. Strike right down the middle, 0-1. One pitch is low and outside. So now one one. Harmon gets ahead now. It'll be one and two to Santa. Santa batting 333 with runners in scoring position. See what he can do here in a two strike count. That pitch is outside, gets away from Kraus. Runner won't go. Two and two. That's a nice play there by Kraus to block that pitch and stop the man on second from going to third. Agree, very nice play by Kraus. The 2-2 to Santa. Upstairs, so now we're all knotted up at three and two. Three, two. Lined in to left, but the catch is made. And now there's two away. Nice two outs there from the Ferry Hawks. As now the man on second is becoming way more manageable in the top of the six. Took the words right out of my mouth. Hartman, a lot of credit to him. He's done a nice job of battling back in tough situations. Zach Jarrett on to hit now. He struck out looking his first time up and popped out to second his second time up. First pitch is in there for a strike. Pitch is outside.
One one pitch. Inside two and one. The honey, the honey hunters have been doing a good job of working a count on all of these at bats. So we should assume some relief will be coming in for the Fairy Ox in the in the next inning, possibly. That pitch skied out into left center field. And the catch is made, and the side is retired. Fairhawks trail 1-0, heading to the bottom of the sixth. As we welcome you back for the bottom of the sixth inning, it will be the D.H. Stevenson Romero. Still looking for the Ferry Hawks' first hit of the game. Romero watches that one for a strike, so it'll be 0-1. Hey, Ferry Hawk fans, have you been out to Community Park this season yet? The venue has undergone a number of upgrades, including brand new seats, new inflatables, a new speed pitch, and the addition of local food vendors, including Kettleback, Hobra, Flower and Oak, and the Staten Bean. Book your trip to Staten Island University Hospital Community Park today by visiting ferryhawks.com or calling 929-59-HAWKS. 0-2 count to Romero now. Romero slaps that one in between third base and shortstop, and the Ferry Hawks have their first hit and their first base runner of the day. As Romero, as Romero ends the perfect game for Zach Mort, but nonetheless, Mort has still been on fire, and we'll see if he can continue that momentum facing adversity with Romero on first. The designated pinch runner, Mikey Edelman, be over at first base now with Luis Castro coming on to hit. Mikey Edelman got a lot of speed over there. We'll see if he tries to grab a bag, get a runner in scoring position for the Ferry Hawks. And he goes. The snap throw to second. Edelman is out. Trying to steal second. And now there's one away. As this is the second time that happened this game, the runner overran the bag that happened earlier with the Honey Hunters and now with the Ferry Hawks. God, I think that the turf might be a little slippery. It's been a little, we've seen a little rain today. 
So just like that, it's one out and none on for the Fairhawks. Castro fouls that one down the first baseline, one and one. Castro lines that one into center field. He's got a base hit. So after Edelman is caught stealing, Castro gets a runner right back on for the Ferry Hawks for their second hit of the night. As the bats are coming alive for the Ferry Hawks when they need it. Second baseman Garrett Cuber coming on to hit now with one on and one out. Brandon Pugh, the leadoff man, waiting on deck. Check throw to first is not in time. Castro is safe. There goes Castro, the throw to second, and it's going to scoot by the second baseman. Castro is going to be safe with a stolen base. So the Fairhawks have their first man in running, uh, first man in scoring position tonight. Nice stolen base there for Castro. And he got, a, he, he got a nice jump on that. Now man on second for the Fairhawks. Speed kills Fairhawks trying to win using speed tonight. Second pitch to the at bat is swung on and missed. Big swing there. One on one to Cuber. If you're just tuning in, it's the Honey Hunters leading 1 0. One out and a runner in scoring position here in the bottom of the sixth. Cuber calls time. We'll step out of the box. And they'll step back in. The 1-1 one, one to Cuber. Swung on and missed again. Looked a little confused. Now it's one and two. Cuber with a nice opportunity to drive in the first run of the game for the Ferry Hawks. He's got Castro over there at second. One, two, pitch. Cut on and missed. Cuber goes down swinging, and now there's two out. Mort with the strikeout there, and he comes back from that stolen base from the man on first. As now, the f <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> the Ferry Hawks with two outs have a man on second to try and get back. So a crucial spot here for Pugh. He's got a runner on second with two away. Watches that first pitch outside, ball one. Is this an ideal scenario for the Ferry Hawks? They have their leadoff man to try and tie this game up. Pitcher takes a look back at second. Pitch to Pew is swung on and missed strike one. Hawks City on their toes right now as they await the first run of the game for the Ferry Hawks. As McDano mentioned, Pew has been a great hitter this season. He's in a big spot. The 1-1. One, one. Outside ball two. The man waiting on deck is Matt Winokur. Winokur still looking for his first hit as a ferry hawk. If Pugh can get on, it'll be a great op a great spot for him to get his first hit.
2 1. Swung on and missed at a pitch outside. So now 2 and 2. It's going to be an action pitch. Casher should be going no matter what over at second. It's a big 2 2 pitch here. Pew batting 500, runners in scoring position. 2 2 pitch. Swung on, but just got a piece of it, so we'll do it again on two and two. Lights coming on here at Staten Island University Hospital Community Park. Fairhawks looking for the win on a Friday night in front of the home crowd. Pew trying to tie it up here. Kick the pitch. Swung on and missed at an upstairs fastball. Pew's frustrated. Mort finds his way out of the jam. Still one nothing, Honey Hunters. It'll be the third baseman, Carlos Franco, getting us started here in the top of the seventh. The Honey Hunters lead 1-0. It's been a closely contested pitcher's duel between Ryan Hartman and Zach Mort. First pitch is upstairs for ball one. That pitch grounded down the first baseline, foul ball. Still no action either bullpen. Pitch just catches the zone, one and two. Now as we look over to the left, actually, some action in the Fairhawks bullpen, I lied. Someone's up and throwing, so this might be the last inning of work for Hartman. Two two pitch, fouled back. So we'll do it again. As it's a tough at bat for Hartman, as Honey Hunters look to work his count and get him out of this game, as he's been hot ever ever since he gave up that home run. Pitch is low, so it's going to be three and two. Three two pitch. Skied out into left field. Play will be made one way. Now that 
Hulk City, come create awesome Fairy Hulk memories with your friends and family by planning your group outing to Staten Island University Hospital Community Park today. Groups start at just 10 people and receive 20% off box office pricing, free Hulk hankies for each group member, seats together in best available location, and a group wel welcome on video board. Visit FairyHawks.com or call 929-59-HAWKS to plan your outing today. As Gary Huber gets the out there for the Fairy Hawks. With two on and none out, it'll be the first baseman, Curtis Terry. First pitch to Terry is low and outside, ball one. Harmon struggling to find the zone in this at-bat. He's falling behind 2-0. We've seen him work back, though, so he shouldn't be worried out there. That pitch in fair territory, and it's going to be Winokur making another nice catch in foul ground. Still 1-0, Honey Hunters headed to the bottom of the seventh. It'll be the first baseman, Matt Winokur, leading things off for the Ferry Hawks in the bottom of the seventh as we welcome you back from the seventh inning stretch. Ferry Hawks trail 1-0. It's been a close pitcher's duel. Winokur swings and misses at that first pitch. Winokur still looking for his first hit as a Ferry Hawk, and what a place it would be in front of the home crowd on a Friday night. They're down 1-0 in the seventh. The 0 1 pitch. Swung on and missed, so it'll be 0 2. Base runners have been hard to come by in this one, just seven total hits. Fairhawks had a real nice chance to knot this one up at one last inning. Couldn't take advantage of the runner in scoring position with one away. Now the 0 2 to Winokur. Be fouled off, and we'll do it again on 0 2. Zach Mord has been very successful in this game as it looks like the Honey Hunters manager sees that and there's no action in the bullpen so far. Pitch will be inside, so it'll be one and two.
that pitch popped up. It'll be the shortstop making the play. And Winokur is retired for the first out of the bottom of the seventh. Be the shortstop Angel Aguilar coming on to hit. Flew at his first time up, struck out his second time up. Ah, put it the other way around. Struck at his first time up, granted out to third his second time up. My apologies. Aguilar watches that first pitch outside ball one. Aguilar went two for three last night, marking his second multi-hit game in a row as he's in a big spot here. It's the hometown kid, Kevin Krause, waiting on deck. Aguilar, big swing and a miss at that one, so it'll be one and one. Aguilar fouls that one back. It'll be one and two. Ferryhawks find themselves in a close one nothing game. They've trailed by one ever since the third. Trying to eke out an exciting win in front of the hometown crowd on a Friday here at Hawks City. It's turned into a gorgeous June night. The pitch grounded over to third. Aguilar is going to try to beat it out. And the third baseman can't handle the throw. So Aguilar... It's going to reach safely as the hometown kid, Kevin Krause, coming on to hit. What a spot for Staten Island's very own with one on and one out. Hulk City bringing the energy tonight. Krause still looking for his first hit of the day. First pitch of the at-bat is low and outside, ball one. Going to be some action in the Honey Hunters bullpen now. One out to Kraus. Lined out into left field. That ball is going to be caught. So Aguilar is going to have to go back to first, and now there are two away. As it looked like that was going to bloop in for a single, but that's a nice play there from the outfielder. Middle left fielder Rodani Baldwin now. We've seen him take some big swings in this one. Wouldn't be surprised if he takes another big Hack as he tries to give the Firehawks a 2-1 lead. The pitch, and there it is. The big swing and a miss, 0-1. I actually like that in that spot. It's a good spot in the first pitch the at-bat to try and drive one. Took a guess. Didn't make contact that time. He'll try to rebound here on 0-1. There goes Aguilar. It's going to be foul-tipped from Baldwin, so Aguilar is going to have to go back to first. An aggressive start to the at-bat as Mort is going to take this aggr aggressiveness maybe to his advantage as the Ferox players look to drive in a big run. Mort's going to try to go low and outside, I'd assume, with a breaking ball, try to get Baldwin swinging. Aguilar won't go this time. Baldwin watches that one high and outside. One and two. High leverage situation. Everyone's holding their breath. There goes Aguilar again, but Baldwin swings and misses. Honey Hunters still lead one nothing through seven innings.
be a pitch and change for the Ferry Hawks. It's going to be Jesse Remington. Credit to Ryan Hartman. He went, he went seven innings with four strikeouts and only one earned run. So Remington's going to try to pick up the ball and keep this at a one-run game. Yep, Remington, 6-6-5 six, 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 ERA on the season. Has five outings with 22 runs allowed. First pitch from Remington was a ball. Swing and a miss from Corbello. He's leading things off here for the Honey Hunters in the top of the eighth. One two pitch is really inside. Had to watch out there. Now it's two and two. Two two pitch on the way. Also really inside three and two. Joe big three two count here. Honey Hunters can get the leadoff runner on. As I mentioned before, base runner is hard to come by. The three two pitch. Swung on and belted foul. Yeah, he turned that one, but just went foul too early there on that pitch. My apologies. It's actually... Oh, no. No, it is Kerbel. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm saying over here. I'm a little nervous. It's a 3-2 count in a big ball game. Ferry Hawks trying to edge out a win. They trail 1-0 here in the top of the eighth. That pitch is skied out into shallow right field. That's going to drop in foul ground. You had both Winokur and Castro coming on to try and make that catch. We've seen Whitaker make plenty of nice catches in foul ground tonight. Couldn't make that one. Yeah, that ball got lost in the fog up there. As I said earlier, that fog was going to make a difference in this game. Certainly a froggy night, but hasn't changed the fact that it is a beautiful night here in Hulk City. That pitch... Pain in the corners, Jesse Remington, a real nice pitch. Strikes out Curbelo, and there's one away. That was a beautiful breaking ball there by Remington. That fooled the batter, and he got him looking. Nice strikeout, nice strikeout there from Remington to open up his relief. It'll be Steven Sensley, the left fielder, coming on to hit with one away and none on. First pitch is inside ball one. Want to step up your Fairy Hawk fandom? Visit FairyHawks.com and hit the shop tab to grab your Fairy Hawks merchandise today. Hoodies, t-shirts, jerseys, and hats in all sizes for men, women, and children. We have it all. I know after the game, I'll be down at the shop trying to secure some Fairy Hawk merch for myself. Repping the hometown squad. One and one count now to Sensley. Remington's going to step off. McNana, what do you think the approach, the approach is right here? Well, Remington has to ease into this game, but right here, it's a 1-0 count. The batter here is going to try and settle in. It's a big spot to try and get some insurance for Gastonia, but they're still in control of this game. I think there's a little confusion. Homer Bush coming out to talk to the umpire. We'll get this sorted out. As I've mentioned before, a real tight game. Hulk City on their toes on a beautiful night. Trying to motivate the squad to a Friday night victory over one of the better teams in the Atlantic League. Yep, this will be a big win as the Ferryhawks are last in the North and Gastonia's first 
in the south. So the Fairy Oaks have definitely had a strong outing, and it'll be amazing if they could end this night with a W. So after confusion, it's been decided that the count is one and one. Now Pedro Gonzalez on deck is saying it should be two and one, and yes, the count is two and one. Surprised Remington didn't throw another warm up pitch, but the two one pitch. Sweeping into the strike zone, so now two and two. As an, another breaking ball there. Looked like it was going to be a ball, but broke in the last second right into the strike zone. Real nice pitch. Now the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and fouled back here next to the booth. You know, in the second game I called that, uh, I had a foul ball come ba right back into the booth. And actually, if I would have had the window open, the ball would have hit my partner, Brandon Ritchie. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on. Foul back behind no plate. This one might come to the booth, but it won't. Heads up below. Fan's going to come down with the ball. Two high pop-ups there. Foul. Working the count for Remington. I'm waiting to come down with the ball of my own over here. If you're just tuning in, Fairy Hawks trail 1-0. Here in the top of the eighth. It's one out and none, none on. The 2 2 pitch just misses the zone. So a big 3 2 pitch. And a really big 3 2 pitch because if Steven Sansley can get on, it'll be the MVP of the night, Pedro Gonzalez. He has two extra base hits. And that pitch is going to be outside. So it's a walk to Steven Sensley with the dangerous Pedro Gonzalez coming up to hit. What a spot. Yep, he's been hot as of late, as I said earlier. And what a spot he's, he is in right now, looking for insurance for the, honey, for the Honey Hunters. He's actually the Honey Hunters' first base runner since Gonzalez had that leadoff double back in the sixth. He's got one on and one out. The first pitch of the at-bat is swung on and fouled back. As you've mentioned plenty of times tonight, McNano, Gonzalez, a hot hitter. He's got a lot of confidence at the plate. He's going to be swinging the bat. Feel one. Out inside in a way, so it'll be one and one. Yeah, Pedro Gonzalez shows it's not how you start, but how you finish. This whole season, he's been hitting 190, but as of late this past week, he's been hot. I like how you said that. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. He's in a big spot right now. Two and one. He has been the guy for the Honey Hunters as of late. Everybody holding their breath. The 2 1 pitch inside. We've seen a lot of those inside pitches from Remington this inning. Runner goes, and that's going to get away from Kraus. It'll be a walk to Pedro Gonzalez. So now first and second with one away. It'll be the leadoff man, Cole Freeman. A big spot for the leadoff man, Cole Freeman. As the last time the Honey Hunters had first and second, all the way back into the first inning, the Fairy Rocks turns a double play courtesy of Angel Aguilar. As the Fairy Rocks hope they'll get that same result here with one out. There's now some action in the Fairy Hawks bullpen. 
there's been action in the Honey Hunters bullpen. We assume that was the last inning of work back in the bottom of the seventh for Zach Mort. Had to make a correction. We said it was Jesse Remington. Tough to see up here in the mound. The pitcher right now for the Fairhawks is actually Christian Algretti. Apologies there. Algretti finds himself in a tough situation here with the leadoff man, Cole Freeman, up to hit. There's a runner in scoring position and a man on first base with one away in a close 1-0 Honey Hunters game here in the top of the eighth. First pitch of the at-bat is low, ball one. Yep, Christian Algretti's on the mound. Pardon us. He grew up in Brooklyn, so close to the hometown kid. Right over the bridge. Yep. 1-0 pitch. Belted into left field. That ball's gonna fall. It's gonna get by the left fielder who was trying to slide. One run comes in to score. Two runs come in to score. And it's a triple, two RBI triple make it for the leadoff man, Cole Freeman. Now the Honey Hunters lead three to nothing. Cole Freedom, Cole Freeman, excuse me, the leadoff man gets a triple. As the left fielder has been making plays all night, but he struggled there and that ball got past him. Try to make the sliding attempt. That's an aggressive move in that spot. The slide could have led to the second out of the inning. Instead, it leads to two runs and a man on third with one away. Now it's Kevin Santa still looking for his first hit of the game. Watches that first pitch outside ball one. Despite that two-run triple, Fairhawks certainly still not out of this game. They got to start hitting, though, in the bottom of the eighth. Pitch finds the zone, strike one. As Algretti once again paints the corner with that nice breaking ball. That pitch skied out into left field. Cash will be made, runner tanking at third, the relay throw, he's gonna be safe. Didn't go to the cutoff man, he actually went right to Kraus. So a run scores on the sack fly, and it's 4 nothing Honey Hunters. Now up to hit will be Zach Jarrett. Manager Homer Bush. Going to come on to talk to his guy on the mound. It was a one nothing game going into the top of the eighth, however... Christian Algretti's really struggled giving up three earned runs. And now the Fairhawks in danger of losing a real close game to one of the Atlantic League's best. We're going to see a pitching change now. We'll let you know in just a moment who it is. Pitcher will be Pedro Payano. Has a 2-3-7 ERA on the season. As Payano has been a, a significant relief pitcher for the Ferry Hawks. He's in a high leverage situation here, trying to limit the damage. Give the bat somewhat of a chance in this one. On deck right now, as I mentioned before, Zach Jarrett. Struck out looking his first time up, then flew out his... Uh, last two times up, so still looking for his first hit of the game with two out and none on. Yeah, P Payano comes in a big spot here. Trying to contain the Gastonia Honey Hunters from scoring any more as the game falls out of reach for the Fairy Hawks, but Payano will try and stop that.
We assume that it will not be Zach Moore coming on to pitch in the bottom of the eighth for the Honey Hunters. We'll see what the new arm on the mound can do. First pitch of the at-bat is Scott behind home plate and foul. Second pitch of the at-bat is cut on and missed, so some light at the end of the tunnel in this inning. Payano could get a quick out and hold the Honey Hunters to just three runs. Yep, nice right to start. Two pitches, two strikes for Payano. The pitch just missed the zone a little high, so we'll do it again. One and two this time. Payano trying to find a way out. The pitch. It's going to be low, two and two. Jarrett battling back in this at bat. Nice at bat here for Jarrett. Could agree with that. Jarrett trying to get on base with two out. Keep this inning alive for the Honey Hunters. Pitch is going to be popped up. It'll be Matt Whitaker coming on to make the catch. He's had a couple nice ones in foul ground tonight. Fairhawks trail 4 nothing, headed to the home half of the eighth. It's going to be a pitching team for the Gastonia Honey Hunters. Nick Wells coming on to pitch. Leading off the bottom of the eighth for the Fairy Hawks will be the third baseman, Jack Elliott. They trail 4 0 in here in the bottom of the eighth. First pitch is really inside and almost got him. Be 1 0. Yep, Nick Wells coming in for the Honey Hunters. He allowed two runs in the ninth last Saturday, but he got the final out against. The Ferry Ox. Quickly 2 0 here to Elliott. Elliott, big swing and a miss at that one. 2 1. As the bats have to come alive for Staten Island. 
And Jack, Jack Elliott has been hot as of late. He needs to start that. Jack Elliott watches that one outside. Three and one to a hitter's count now. If Jack Elliott can get on. It'll be a big base runner for the Ferry Hawks. The 3-1 pitch. Smashed into right field. That ball is going to go. Jack Kelly gets the bottom of the eighth. Started with a home run. It's going to be the Ferry Hawks' first run of the night. It's 4-1 Gastonia. The elite Elliott shows his eliteness as that one sent to right field. Long gone. Jack Elliott opens up the scoring for the Ferry Hawks in the bottom of the eighth. That one's really gonna get the crowd excited here. I love what you said, McNanna, the elite Elliot. That's a sick nickname, man. Elliot, certainly elite here in the bottom of the eighth. Maybe that'll wake up the bats. Now it'll be D the DH, Stevenson Romero. Watches that one, strike one. Romero has been struggling, but the bats have been alive. Maybe that last home run from Ellie could give him some motivation. Romero just got a piece of that one. It'll be 0-2. Man, the elite Elliot. McNano's, McNano's on points with the nickname sometimes, man. Got to start calling him that more often. Hawk City alive. The 0-2 is upstairs. So now 1-2 and two to Romero. Romero with a stone cold take. It's now two and two, battling back. You can feel the excitement starting to build in the building. Fans really getting into it. The two two pitch is swung on and missed. So it's a strikeout for Nick Wells. Yeah, Wells, he gets right back into it into in that at bat with a strikeout. To Romero. Luis Castro will come on with one, on, one out and none on. Castro struck out, singled, and stolen a base in this one. Watches that first pitch for the first strike. Smashes this one. Gonna go just foul. The guys in the bullpen gotta watch out. That ball was smoked down the third baseline. If that was fair, it could have been dangerous. However, it's gonna be 0 and 2. Maybe just a little bit early. Yeah, as you said, if that was fair, that could have been dangerous, especially with the speed of Castro. The 0 2 pitch upstairs. Fair Oaks. Find themselves down four to one here in the bottom of the eighth. Trying to come back. The pitch outside, two and two. Nice at bat here from Castro. He came back into the count. Luis Castro with a big swing and a miss there. So now back-to-back -back strikeouts. Nick Wells is rolling here on the mound after giving up the home run to the elite Elliott. Second baseman Gary Kuber gonna hit here with two out, none on. Gonna try to keep this bottom of the eighth alive. Started with a bang after Jack Elliott's home leadoff home run. However, back-to-back -back strikeouts Find the Fire Hawks down to their final out of the bottom of the eighth. They have four outs remaining in this one. Yeah, you could tell the difference between how the batters are playing in the box since Jack Elliott has got that home run. They've been way more aggressive and swinging more often in this inning. How big were those insurance runs for the Honey Hunters back in the top of the eighth? That home run could have tied the game. Instead, it's a 4-1 contest. Cuber watches that one inside, so he gets ahead in the count, two and one. Cuber with a big swing and a miss there, so now it's two and two. You mentioned, Joe, 
They're taking a lot more swings. However, they're taking a lot more big swings and misses. They're swinging for the fences right now, trying to make hard contact with the ball. 2-2 pitch. Just a bit upstairs. So now a big time 3-2 and two pitch. We have the leadoff man, Brandon Pugh, waiting on deck. Still waiting for his first hit of the day. He struck out three times. Maybe he can turn it around if Cuber gets on base. However, Cuber's going to strike out. So after the leadoff home run to Elliott, it's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back strikeouts for Nick Wells. 4-1, Honey Hunters headed to the top of the ninth. Ferox going to roll with Pedro Payano yet again here in the top of the ninth. They trail 4-1 to one to the Gastonia Honey Hunters. Leading things off this inning for the Honey Hunters will be Carlos Franco. Swings and misses at the first pitch 0-1. So 1-0 ball game. The Honey Hunters led all the way till the top of the eighth where they end up putting up a three spot. Ferryhawks got one back in the bottom of the eighth, but a broken bat here, a nice play. Oh! Winokur almost had a nice play over at first, but he couldn't glove it. We have seen him make some nice plays in foul ground. Couldn't make that play in fair ground. So, Franco's going to get on base here to lead things off. Yeah, broken bat there. Winokur couldn't make that ground ball play at first. Scott Manaya now on to hit with one on and one away. One on and none away, my apologies. First pitch is in there for a strike. Payano, or they're going to, umpire is going to say that is a bull, my apologies. One on. In there. There's the first strike of the at bat. Payano in a real big spot right now, trying to hold this to a three run game. As Payano has been arguably the strongest relief pitcher on the Ferryox team as he's used to the, these big time situations. They're going to call, the Honey Hunters are going to call for their designated pinch runner, Alvin Butler. So maybe he's going to try to grab a bag in a 2 0 count. Umpire calls time. Two O. 
in there for a strike. And then there was some confusion with the count. That's actually going to be a strikeout. So it wasn't a 2-0 count. I guess it was an 0-2 count. My apologies. So there's the first out. It's going to be a strikeout for, for Scott Monet. It's going to be Curtis Terry now to hit. First baseman watches that pitch low and away. Ball one. like to remind you, the Honey Hunters do have their designated pinch runner over there at first base. That pitch, screamer into the outfield. That'll be a base hit. Runner will be held at second, so now two on and one out. Gastonia looking to add on to their lead and get some more insurance, as they did last inning, as now they're in a big spot here, first and second with only one out. It'll be the second baseman, Luis Curbelo, coming up to Baby Shark. School's almost out, Fairy Hawk fans, and blue skies and sunshine are in the forecast. So join us on June 24th, which is tomorrow, for our kickoff the summer celebration where fireworks will line the New York City skyline after the game for the first time in 2023. Visit fairyhawks.com to grab your tickets today. It's going to be an exciting night tomorrow. However, we hone back in on this one. It's two on and one out. First pitch is upstairs, ball one. Piano trying to hold the Honey Hunters to no runs this inning. Starting to get a little frustrated on the mound. There is action in the Honey Hunters bullpen. One oh pitch just missed the zone, so it'll be two and oh. Yeah, it's gotta be frustrating for Piano. Multiple pitches just missed the zone as that one was another example of that. Trying to keep his composure here. 2-0 pitch with one out and two on. Pitch is fouled back. Piano's been solid, finds himself in a little bit of a jam here in a critical spot. As this is the same position that Staten Island was in last inning. Man on first and second with one out and Gastonia capitalized, and he got three runs out of it. 2-1 from Piano. Skied out into shallow right field. Here comes Whitaker, and he makes another nice catch. Runner's going to tag at second. He'll go to three. Runner also tags from first and goes to second, but nobody is covering. Whitaker got the throw in, but nobody was over at second. So both runners tag, and now it's second and third, but there's two out. Yeah, that was a nice and smart play by the pinch runner there. No one was covering the bag at second, and he, he just ran right to it. Very nice heads-up play. Poor coverage from the Ferry Hawks. Now it's going to be the left fielder, Steven Sensley, with two runners in scoring position and two out. Swings and misses at the first pitch. Very important spot here with... Pedro Gonzalez waiting on deck. He has two extra base hits and a walk in this one. Wouldn't want him, him up with the bases loaded. So now's the time for Piano to get out of the jam. Here's the 0-1 pitch. He's going to just find the zone. Paints in the corners, 0-2. Runners will be going. Big 0-2 pitch with two out. You've got Franco on third, and you got Terry on second. The 0-2 pitch from Piano to Sensley. Oh, and it's going to hit him. Going to make sure he's okay. <laughs> we heard that up here. That must have hurt. He'll be in the ice bath tonight. We got to finish him from the PA, and then he hit him with the pitch. So now. That's a tough hit there. Hope he's okay. Yeah, really hope he's okay. That really sounded like it hurt. I do not want to be the guy in the batter's box. 
Coming up to Wii Sports is going to be Pedro Gonzalez with the bases loaded and two out. Some action in the Fairy Hulk's bullpen now. Hopefully we don't have like a Wii Sports moment here. And, uh, you know. Pedro Gonzalez has been real dangerous tonight. Sensley's going to be shaking it out over there. Down the first baseline. Getting checked out by the trainer. Making sure he can run. Yep, he seems he's okay. And now Pedro Gonzalez has the bases loaded here in a big position for more insurance runs for Gastonia. It really, I, I can't get over that. That really sounded like that hurt. But we have to focus up here in a big, big, big spot. First pitch is low and away, ball one. Payano's got to attack this hitter because if he doesn't, he could walk in a run. Gonzalez has been hot tonight and recently, but it's important for him that he keeps some discipline up at the plate. Might see a lot of breaking balls from Payano here. The pitch smacked up the middle. It's going to be a base hit. One run comes in to score. Another one. And it's going to be a two-run single for Pedro Gonzalez. He strikes again in this one, and he's going to give the Honey Hunters a 6-1 to one lead. Yeah, his bat has been flaming hot as of this week, and he gets a two-RBI single for the Honey Hunters. And now that extends their lead to five. Crushing run given up there for Piano. Still two out, though. The pitch outside. As I mentioned before, there is action in the Fairy Hawks bullpen. We'll see who they go to if they have to go to him here in the top of the ninth. Hartman was real solid on the mound, only giving up one run, but the bullpen struggled giving up three runs in the eighth and two runs here in the ninth. Check swing, but he went around. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Freeman. Ball's going to come on to the field. Someone, someone's going to have to go pick it up. <laughs> Piano's going to go and get it. Everyone's kind of just standing around. Nobody wants to go get the ball. It'll be a 2-1 and one count. 1-1 one one count. One on one pitch. Just misses the strike zone. Now two and one. Two on, two out. Two one pitch. Outside, so three and one. Piano in danger, loading up the bases yet again. Trying to get out, trying to get the leadoff guy Cole Freeman out here. Freeman smacks this one into the gap. That ball is going to get down. Runner takes the third turn at third. He'll score. Long lead over at second, but the runner is safe over there. One run comes in to score. It's an RBI single. For Cole Freeman and the Honey Hunters extend their lead to seven to one. What a night it's been for Cole Freeman. He he adds yet another RBI onto his stat sheet tonight. And we're gonna see Pedro Piano come out of the game now. Did a nice job limiting the damage in the eighth, but it's going to be three earned runs here 
for him in the ninth. We'll see who the Firehawks bring into the game. This was a one nothing game just a couple innings ago, and Jack Elliott got the Firehawks within three, but now they find themselves trailing by six. The pitcher for the Firehawks now will be Enrique Santana. Yep, Enrique Santana has had five outings for the Ferry Hawks. Has a 1.59 ERA. Santana gonna try to limit the damage. Ferry Hawks find themselves down six here in the top of the ninth. It's a 7 to 1 Gastonia Honey Hunters lead as they look to take game one of the series here in Staten Island. This is the second meeting between these two squads. Honey Hunters swept the Ferry Hawks the first time up. Pitch is high, so it's 2 0. Oh. That's the bullpen for the Ferry Hawks. Struggle tonight as Hartman, the starting pitcher, had a great start, but the relief couldn't be on par with his performance and has allowed six runs since. Quickly 3-0 and now, and the bases might be loaded yet again. Here's the 3-0 pitch. Now three and one. Some fans in Hawk City still trying to hold on to hope. They are not wrong though. It is never over till it's over. Maybe some magic here tonight in Hawk City. Here's a three one pitch. Grounded over to first. Whitaker will beat him to the bag and the side is retired. Seven one honey hunters. It's gonna be the last call for the Ferry Hawks.
It'll be Brandon Pugh, the center fielder, leading things off for the Firehawks. It's the last call for them. They find themselves down six, run six runs here in the bottom of the ninth. Trying to turn things around. First pitch is low for ball one. There was a pitching change. Jamie Schultz for the Honey Hunters. What can you tell us about him? It's a 5.03 ERA with 20 outings with 19.2 innings pitched for Gastonia this season. One and one here to uh, <laughs> Pew. Pew trying to get something started. We had a little bit of that magic with Jake Elliott. Pitch is just going to miss the zone barely. So two and one. Big swing and a miss from Pew. Now two and two. Fairy Hawks have their leadoff hitter to start off this inning. Let's see if they can spark some momentum and maybe cause a severe comeback in this game. Pew is going to strike out swinging. He's got the golden sombrero tonight, and there's one away here in the bottom of the ninth. Nice way for Schultz to start off. Matt Winokur, the first baseman, coming on to hit. He's made a couple nice plays in the field, but he's still looking for his first hit as a ferry hawk. Now he really needs one. As the light's starting to get dim for the ferry hawks, watch that one down the middle, strike one. Got a beach ball in the stands. Check swing. Did he go? No. One on one. If Winokur could get a base hit or even an extra base hit here, that would give him some confidence to start off as his career as a ferry hawk. As you said, still looking for his first hit. Tips that one back. Hit him on the leg on the tip, so it'll be one, two and one. Believe the count is two and one. Here's the pitch to Winokur. Swung on and missed. And now the count was one and two. That strike three called. So Winokur goes down swinging. It's, it's two strikeouts to start the inning for Schultz. Aguilar It's going to come on to hit. With now two away and the Fire Hawks down to their last out. As we mentioned before, it started off with a pitcher's duel between Hartman and and more then the Ferry Hawks bullpen came in and they really struggled. Three innings in the eighth, three runs in, uh, three runs in the eighth, three runs in the ninth. And they find themselves down now seven one in the bottom of the ninth. Aguilar check swing. And he went. So it's one and one. Ferry Hawks trying to get some two out magic in the bottom of the ninth here. Aguilar fouls that one back in the fair. Oh, wow. Really loud. Watch out below. The Ferry Hawks are down to their final strike. Gastonia looking to take game one of this three game set. Here's the one, two. Aguilar is staying alive at the plate. We'll do it again on one and two. Waiting on deck is the hometown kid, Kevin Kraus. If Aguilar can get on base. Schultz has been light out. Two straight strikeouts. Here's the pitch. Really inside. Aguilar had a watch out there. It's two and two. Schultz trying to challenge Aguilar there. Two, two count. Ferrox down to the left strike.
I go putting up a fight. Here's the pitch, but he strikes out swinging. It's going to be Jamie Sold striking out the side here to close out a 7-1 Gastonia Honey Hunters win. Ferry Hawks were in it for a while, and then it all kind of fell apart there in the eighth. Joe, what are your thoughts? Yeah, as we opened up earlier, I said the pitching staff needed to be strong. As Hartman, the starting pitcher, was very strong, but then as his pitch count arose, the bullpen had to come in and allowed seven Excuse me, six runs in both the eighth and the ninth inning. Yeah, just a tough loss for the Ferry Hawks as Jack Elliott's home run back in the eighth gave you some hope. Those insurance runs for Gastonia were huge in the eighth because it kind of deflated a lot of this momentum in this game. Ferry Hawks will be back in action again tomorrow as they play game two of this series against Gastonia. That's all for tonight, though. I've been Nick Foster. And I'm Joe Mignano. Have a great night, Staten Island.